Since 2017, Lincolnshire Police have deployed specialist drone operators across the county to support the force in crime prevention, search and rescue and apprehension of wanted persons, having evolved over the years into what has become a valuable resource. Well, I'm Kev Taylor, I'm Chief Pilot of Lincolnshire Police, so my job title is Chief Pilot and Flight Safety Manager. So I've really got that all-encompassing role to ensure that our drone operations uh, are, are compliant to, to the regulations and that they're safe and that we go our way, keep a high standard of trade and get the results uh, that, that we need with the drones um, for the force. During a major incident fire in Boston Town Centre, close to the docks, a police drone was used to monitor the fire and the spread of embers. So what we were looking at there, Sean, is some footage from actually just last week, uh, a major fire in, in Boston. Um, that uh, building was actually, as you can see, it's absolutely devastated. It was a massive fire. It was in quite a busy area. It caused quite a lot of concern. And you can see it's very, very close to other buildings as well. And what we're able to do is support the fire brigade again and, and, and look at how those embers spread. So the, the spread of embers in the wind, that's always quite a big one for for how a fire does spread. And um, the thermal camera again for the fire officers, they, they always intrigue me. Whenever you go to a major fire like that and you show them the footage, within a few seconds, they've really computed where the hotspots are and what they need to do. And even things like trees, because it, even when they look at the thermal footprint of a tree, they'll realize that that tree's on fire inside. Even though we're not seeing flames, that tree's gone. And that's the route that that fire's potentially gonna spread. So yeah, that, that footage there from Boston, uh, building fire, quite a big one, major concern for us. And, and again, just supporting uh, Lincolnshire Fire and Rescue. And I've been working with Lincolnshire Fire and Rescue Service as well, and to you know, to hopefully spot them in their, their own um, uh, drone operation. They are on our um, ops manual with us, so they're part of our operational authorization. So it is a joint venture. Um, they're not flying with us at the moment, but hopefully um, down the line, when they're ready, they'll, they'll have their own capability. What well, it's important to explain is that um, as far as the operators are concern, concerned, it is a skill, it's not a role, so they're not dedicated to drone operators, so it's a skill. Just like the carrier tears, they'll have a drone in the car and they'll fly that. Obviously, they have to go through the whole GBC um, system and be trained like that, and then obviously after that, we're looking at operational competence as well. But at the moment, we've got um, 15, so that's five at each base, so with three bases there and five at each base. A, a number of our deployments are not always um, spontaneous, they're uh, pre-planned, there might be warrants, uh, um, uh, and in this case what you're looking at is a cannabis farm, which recently actually, uh, yeah, just a little sample, cannabis farms are a regular thing for us. Um, these types of farms, are, let's be clear about this, this is not somebody just growing a few plants in their own property for their own use. This is organised crime gangs who are massive, massive properties. And if you look in the news last week, you know, we had one which had 5,000 plants in there, you know, that's got like a yield of five million pounds a year. So we're talking um, big organised crime gangs. Uh, but this one just shows you there with with that the, um, the ability for us to go out and um, um, based on intelligence look at uh, that property um we can see straight away with that that the roof is is totally disproportionate color to every other roof around it as you get close in you can see and just pen a little bit there why is that roof in that case the thermals are white hot we might use a different color palette but you can see how hot it is and um and that's the warrant being executed there and and, and the officers go in to execute that warrant the the picture speaks for itself and um it's just one of the use uh, that we can you know help 
detect crime and, 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 and help us to catch criminals. And there's lots more complexities to things like this and uh, the arrests and, and, and sometimes things like uh, um, effectively slave labour that's used in some of these types of farms as well. So it, it's a lot more complex than just a little bit of cannabis. So, uh, but again, uh, a great opportunity for us here to be able to verify that, put that footage in front of the magistrate, secure a warrant, and then being able to um, assist the officers who would do that to ensure that that warrant is executed securely. We keep a containment on the property. Um, anybody doing a runner from the property, we were able to track and, and, and get arrested, and especially people coming out of maybe skylights, running on roofs, going across that way. A lot of roof work involved in, in, in a lot of the incidents that we go to where people are on roofs and stuff for one reason or another. Yeah, so it's designed to be geographically spread and actually it fits in with our custody basis. So we've got four custody stations within Lincolnshire Police. So that's Lincoln, Boston, Grantham and Skegness. So um, that's exactly where we position the drone sub kits there and it's the officers that work out of those bases that are the drone operators. August 2022 and a 4am call resulted in the hunt for a male aged 38 who was wanted for various serious offences after running from police. Drone officers successfully tracked the mail and guided other officers to the location. What's happened here is the, the drone has tracked uh, this individual that we, we want. We, we, we're after this guy, we've been after him for a couple of hours, and the drone's tracked him to initially underneath that tree where he's done a runner, he's talking the dog in and police officers, taser officers. He's wanted for some serious offences, and he's realised the only way he can get away from them is to jump in the river and, and, and go across. So you can see the thermal camera clearly showing him going across the river and even heating the water up as he goes across. It is daylight, but for us, you know, some people think we only use the thermal at night. No, nope, thermal's just as important in the day for us. Really, really helpful. The the drone pilot's tracking him. Brand new drone pilot as well. This is quite a, quite a, a really, real good job for this drone pilot who literally came out, finished his training, got operations line off with me the day before this incident. Um, you can see he's climbing out there now. You can see his heat source. Now, this presents a challenge for our officers now because they're not going to swim across there. And it's a four-mile drive to get round to the other side of that field. So our drone pilots continue to track him and I think it's around about the 15 minutes that it, from start to finish um, on the footage is, as you can see, he's going across the field. What the drone pilots managed to do is use a, use a laser rangefinder now on the nearest street in the direction that this chap's travelling. Said to the officers, that's where you want to go. Go to this location. They've got themselves to that location. They go, we skip forward 15 minutes. He's really given up and there he's got a taser. He's got a dog, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, in front of him and he's in custody. And let's be honest, the chances of those officers without the drone tracking, being able to find a route to go four miles in a car to find a bridge that's going to get him to the other side of the river. It, the, the, the chap's desperation to get away does, does scare me. He's taken his life into his own hands there and... I, I, it make I feel really uncomfortable when I think what the outcome could have been on that. Um, but um, the outcome is is arrested. Um, we've got a, a, a victim who's now safeguarded, and that's the most important thing. So we, we know that um, uh, there's safeguarding in place for the victim. And he, he was put before the court. He was remanded. He got a two-week prison sentence for the offences that were involved in this. And um, we did our job. So I started when the programme started. So I, I, uh, you know, before that, I've got history of flying, but before the, my first sort of introduction to drones was when Lincolnshire Police started flying drones, uh, and I was asked to get involved in the program. So that was in 2017 when I first started flying drones, the model aircraft and everything. Long, long before that, but really from 2017 that I first started flying when we started the drone program. So our first generation, I mean, we we went on a discovery phase to see what was right for us as Lincolnshire Police. We looked at what other uh, commercial operators we were using. We looked at what the small number of forces that were operational with drones back then were using. People like Devon Cornwall were extremely uh, an early adoption with great support to us in the early days back in 2017. Um, and we chose to inspire one aircraft with the Z3 camera and the XT um, back back uh, in 2017. That was really the, the workhorse. That was kind of the best thing. But obviously still with limitations, you know, one... Uh, one camera at a time, 15-ish minutes flight at a time. So it still had its limitations. And of course, we couldn't fly in the rain. So um, as far as the evolution of the concept, well, where we are today is, is a completely different story with kids. just phenomenal compared to what we had back then. But in all fairness, was the, the Inspire 1 uh, in its day was really for us. It was just 
fantastic. It's groundbreaking. And, and and even then we were still able to, you know, get some amazing results with, with what you'd consider now to be quite basic aircraft, I guess. In June 2022, a 75-year-old female wandered off from her care home. Suffering with dementia, it was, of course, important that police acted. This is quite a, a common um, type of incident for us, Sean. This is a, a, a really probably, probably a good example of our most used. It's that high-risk missing person. In this case, it's a 75-year-old Alzheimer's patient who's, who's wandered up from, um, I think you'd call it assisted living type, so I think in, in Spalding, in Lincolnshire. There you go, there's our very rural Lincolnshire field, as you can see. Now, if you watch, bless her, what the drone sees here is she she's trying to climb across into the other field, and what we see is we see it fall over here. And that's really concerning for the uh, for the drone pilot. And at this point, he's there now considering actually just landing the drone, dropping it and going and, and, and getting to himself. But what he's also doing is, is, is bringing other officers in. And... Um, so uh, what he's able to do is look at the location. She she has the dog with her. She's out walking with the dog. Uh, you saw in the early part the 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 cows took a bit of an interest to her, which was a bit of a concern as well. Um, but what the uh, drum pilot is able to do is they locate her. Um, she was wearing a nice bright coat, which helped uh, easily locating her, thankfully. And then just a combination of the daylight camera and the film camera. And you can see at the end there. There's the officers being guided into exactly where she is and we can get her back home and, and get her safe and, and try and make some provision to make sure that she doesn't go off and wander off again because she really was just wandering around in circles. She didn't know where she was. She didn't have a purpose um, and she really needed, you know, she didn't know where she was going. Maybe at some point she might have um, uh, bumped into somebody who would have had a concern about her and we, we might have found her a little bit later. We went through with the Mavics. We still stayed with what was the fair weather stuff. But when, once you get into the all weather aircraft, it got quite complex, especially in the early days. And we wanted to do that sort of evolution of the all weather aircraft. And, you know, I think there's still a lot of lessons being learned and, and a lot of forces moved to them. And we, 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 we sort of held off for quite a while before we moved on to our next generation. We wanted to make sure that, that, that it was right. And, we saw it, it was almost one of those vicious circles where technology was moving so fast and it's well if we just wait another month there might be something even better and and at some point you've got to you, you've just got to dig in and, and and get what you need um but yeah certainly it is such a fast evolution of, of, of technology i've got fond memories of the inspire one and, and and particularly you know three months into our operation and one of the incidents um that, that we had which will you know there's nothing i suppose if you genuinely save a life using a drone, I don't think anything can trump that. And that was with an Inspire one in the very early days um, when we, we just started. But I mean, technology now, the, the M30 is uh, is our sort of stable um, workhorse really. And the technology in that, and, and we touched the surface, there's so much more in it that we can use as well. We've started getting into using the autonomous flight missions for auto mosaics, for crime scenes, and that's been really, really well received. So it just goes on really. In November 2022, a male suffering from a mental health episode climbed scaffold of Old Market Cornhill, Lincoln, and self-harmed. A Lincolnshire police drone was deployed to support officers on the ground. You're looking at quite a challenging situation. Just a little bit of footage, actually, just a short footage here of a, uh, someone who's suffering mental health climbed on on top of a building in 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 Lincoln. We need negotiators to go on there to be able to talk to them, bring them down safely. So we've got um, a, a multiple purposes, really. But what it just shows you is that we were able to a, look at the, um, uh, the, the the person who needs the help, see where they are, make sure it's safe for our officers to climb up and they're not really going to be attacked on the way up. So these, as you can see, is on the other side of the building. is actually laid down on the other side so we can get our, our officers up, put our trained negotiators up there who can safely talk him around into into coming down and getting the medical attention he deserves. He had harmed himself and we need to get some, some medical attention to him. So Spotlight comes into its own thermal camera being able to help and, and really just, you know, if he does move around, it's pitch black, um, how are we going to know where he's gone? Um, so what we're able to do is at all times just communicate. He's just on the opposite side. He's laid down. He's not moving, or he's on the move and he's going off to the other end. At the beginning, what we did was we held sort of open desks so they could come along and have a look um, and uh, give an introduction, give them the opportunity to to see the equipment and and, and understand how it works. 
we generally try and look for people who are, who are if we can find them interested in technology or, or maybe even have some interest in, in that side of it. But realistically, you know, all officers are, are good at judging risk. And for us, that's that's the key thing, isn't it? It's about being able to assess risk and, and, and all officers are good at that. But we look for, you know, there are people who put themselves forward and knock on the door. And unfortunately, we can't accommodate all those because some of them are in the right place or we've already got somebody in that position on that shift. Um, so we do have a waiting list of people who really, really love to do it. But it's also got to be in the right location for us as well. So it's just looking for that person who wants to push themselves, wants wants to do that. And there's no shortage of, of, um, of volunteers to do that, really. We don't have to push anyone into doing it. There's, there's people that really want to do that. Not only that, the, the beauty is they go to a job, they see the drone in use, and they think, wow, that's great. How do I get in on that? Um, you know, how do I get to do that as a, a, as a skill. It speaks for itself and people are blown away when they see the, the Zoom or the thermal technology that we've got and they go, oh, that is really amazing. And, and, and you can see straight away their eyes light up and they want to get involved. Big one for us is events, and um, what we're looking at is Lincoln Christmas Market. There, it's a big event, lots of people there. Not particularly busy time that we're looking at at the moment. Um, but what it allows us to do is it allows us to monitor those crowd dynamics. Again, when it gets dark, the thermal camera, we can look at where our pinch points are. We do have pinch points within the market. The, the beauty as well, unlike CCTV, which is a, a low dimension, we can see whether the crowd are moving, and we can see gaps. And you just don't, you simply don't get that from CCTV. So to be able to see. If you can see ground, we've got gaps. We can see ground, we've got gaps. It's, it's a quiet period there. It's not one of the busier periods. There's two-way traffic. You can see people moving in both directions. There is the one-way system goes in place, so we can monitor the one-way system to make sure that the, the one-way system is flowing, make sure that um, see where the pinch points are, where people are coming to a stop and running to a halt. We've got the vehicle mitigation points there where there is vehicle mitigation in place. We can keep an eye on those. And of course, with the uh, M30, we can drop in them and we can automatically switch between those um, points of interest without actually having to turn the aircraft and the camera and, and, and zoom it in. It'll do it for us. So we just go, you know, drop pin one, drop pin two, drop pin three, and we can look at point one, point two, point three, and we can give that to, to the incident commander. That's the important thing with this, of course, Sean, is that this is the picture that the incident commanders and decision makers are getting. Everything we do um, is, is based around them having this picture. This is not about their own pilot necessarily having the picture. Okay, the missing person searches, that's for us, but the, the, the people on the roof, the, 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 the person on the roof or, or any sort of negotiator situations or firearms situations, it's that, that picture is, is invaluable to them back in the control room to allow the, the, um, the, the you know, commanders to make those decisions. There's, there's different types of deployment. There's, there's, the, there's that spontaneous one where we've got an incident and we need to deploy. So if we talk about that one as an example, Within the force control room, all the calls come in there. We've got the controllers who will operate and the officers and, and send them to incidents and, and so on. Where there's an incident that air support's required, and there is like a pro forma for that. So will air support would be, what do we need? Do we need a, a helicopter? Do we need a drone? So uh, within the control room is, is uh, a, a force uh, control room uh, inspector, and, and he's really managing that control room. And then he will say, right, okay, we really need a drone at that incident. So he'll, they'll go on, look for the nearest available drone operator and ask them to attend that incident. It's it's really quite simple. There's no real complex flowchart as to saying, okay, what well, does it meet a threshold for needing a drone? It's if you think it's going to help, give us a call and we'll be there. Drones are not a, a, a per se a replacement for MPAS. Um, we've always said that MPAS uh, has got some unique capabilities and, and to be fair, so has the drone. There's things that the drone can do that's sometimes a little bit better, but then, you know, when you talk about a vehicle pursuit, well, we're out of the game when it comes to drones. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're really the two we see complement each other. But it, it's a bit of trust as well. So we've got a real close relationship with our local operating base. We've been down, met them, they've met us. Um, they're quite comfortable with us operating in in the same airspace because we segregate um, by height. So quite often um, the way it will work is we'll go and we'll start, at, if it's a large area search and we're talking, you know, very large area search and we'll go, we'll start and, and, and we'll, we'll start the, the, the search or whatever it, we need to do. 
and then they will uh, come along and effectively sometimes they'll take over but on other occasions we'll continue and they'll continue as well so we keep that so we're never ever above 400 feet they're they're, they're generally operating around a thousand feet anyway and they're quite comfortable with that and we have got a good uh, good contact and good relationship with them and they've come over and joined us and i've been and done a ship with them in the helicopter and we understand their challenges um i do come from that crude aviation world as well so i do understand it but uh, they, they understand our challenges and we encourage every one of our operators to go have a shift with them um they're, they're they're welcome to go do that so they understand you know the challenges that they've got and and, and they understand what we what our capability is as well Following a call from a high-risk missing person who said they were on the railway line with the intention of committing suicide, an area search of all adjoining land using the drone and officers was undertaken. Well, this is probably, again, maybe once a week, missing person search, believed to be near on the railway line and so on. Uh, obviously, the dangers of sending officers on railway lines is self-explanatory. Uh, we can do a kilometre, two kilometres of rail line within a few seconds. We'll fly our, within our visual line of sight rules. So we'll do 500 metres one direction, 500 metres the other. That's flying distance. Don't forget our camera can we, work quite happily. Generally speaking, we would work on the, the thermal on an empty beach as well as flying the, the 500 metres, giving us that extra one kilometre. So if there's somebody on the beach, we'd it's certainly a kilometre. So the, the way you do it is you verify it is if you're doing a search for a person on the beach, you, you'll fly the drone 500 metres away, look at yourself, check what you look like and under those conditions. Yeah, so you're confident we can fly 500 metres that way. We can see 500 metres as well. That's one kilometre done. Back the other way, fly 500 metres, see 500. We've done two kilometres of the beach within five minutes. Um, and, and railway lines are a great one for that because we don't want to send officers onto railway lines. Uh, we often get reports of people saying that they've heard people on railway lines. Very quickly verify that one. That was the live job that I was flying. Very quickly verified. There's nobody on that railway line. We don't need any officers here. We can move on to our next task. So like every uh, operator ready that wants to operate in a specific category, our operators go off and get a GVC. Obviously, we no longer separate commercial anymore, do we? But um, as, as we used to know it. And so our op operators go on a GVC course. We tend to favour them doing uh, the five-day course, which allows them to go in, do their theory, have some flying training with the provider, and then uh, take the flying test of the flight test at the end of it and come back with that GVC certificate. And that really puts them into a position where they've got that legal compliance, they come back with that certificate and they're really happy. And then just like passing the driving test, the learning begins then. And then for us, what we need to look at is that operational competence. And, you know, we don't turn around and say it's five days operational training. It's, we don't put a number on it. It very much is down to that individual, how quickly they learn what their capabilities are. You know, some people go operational extremely quickly. Others take a lot longer and that's fine. The The key thing is always safety. We know that it's always safety, but at the same time, there's no point in us putting an operational police officer out there with a the drone if he can't, if he doesn't know how to search and if he can't find a target. So that's the type of training that we introduce on top of the GBC training as well. And that's, that's really quite important. And it's really important to understand that actually coming back with a certificate is not where we need to be, it's been able to, to carry out those operational tasks. We also include in that a night flight. So we give them night flight differences training and take them through the ops manual as to what our SLP is for flying at night and how we can do that safer. And a lot of our flights are at night and a lot of our flights are high risk because they are challenging and, and we haven't been able to do a survey on that, a daylight survey on that area. Because uh, as I'm sure you remember, one of the things is that you should go out and survey in the daylight, the, the area needing a flight night to, to come up with your SOP and, and we don't have that luxury. So there are high risks, so they need the better degree of understanding of how to assess those risks as well. And that's what they really, we really focus on in the, in that competence training. key for us is before it even comes out of the box is portability because it, it, it packs away obviously we've got the arms out there but it packs away into something which is extremely portable um, and you know for us space is, is critical within the vehicles so that's the key point before we even get out of the box 
it it's quick to deploy. You know, we we don't have to start um, adding devices on their cameras, um, locking arms, making sure particular locks are in place. So it's just the arms pop open as you've seen. None that you've seen this, and and it's very quick to deploy. So that those are the key things before we even get it out of the box and and the points that most people overlook. But yeah, um, after after portability and uh, then um, I suppose to some new the Mavic it appears big, but for us it's it's just compact. The thing is safety features as well because it's dual redundancy on the batteries and lots of redundancy on the IMUs and everything else, the technical stuff inside. Uh, that emergency three prop landing system that it has as well gives you that little bit of um, a little bit of surety, I suppose. Uh, on top of that, six way sensing, so you've got your ultrasonic and your infrared, so. Hopefully you get some protection from that if something does, um, uh, if, if there is something that gets in the way, albeit obviously in low light and a lot of our flights are at, at night. And so really, you know, for us, they're not a primary uh, deconfliction tool. They're just a, a backup, really. Uh, we tend to kind of overlook them and hopefully they will never, ever come into play. And then, like you say, on the sensors itself, well, there's, there's four cameras on here, which is great. I mean, the... Um, when you look at the the size and weight of previous cameras, just uh, alone, and uh, this to you know three cameras on the on the main body, which is the zoom, which is sixteen times optical, and then you've got your um, uh, you, you've got your your digital zoom on top of that, or to, to give you a hybrid of two hundred. You've got your um, six forty by five twelve thermal camera, which is uh, the standard, and it's absolutely superb. And there's they've, they've done some real clever stuff on software with that as well. Um, more recently, which is really good. And then we've got the wide angle camera and the little mirror there, the laser rangefinder, and that's an absolute gem. The the laser rangefinder allows you to ping a, a laser onto something and measure the distance, but that's not the key. The key with the laser rangefinder is if you go to the map, you can see where your target is. So if you've got a row of terraced houses you're looking at, streets and streets of terraced houses, but you don't know which street you're looking at, but the map, the target is on the map and it tells us so that that, that target is just an absolute uh, amazing tool for us. Uh, especially some of those um, spontaneous incidents where we're looking at something and we need to get location and we can also get a lot long as well so we can also get an accurate um, location on that and then of course you've got the first person view camera as well which you've got the option of and we carry second controllers so we can have a second camera operator as well as a pilot flying um, but the second controller also allows us to give it to an incident commander on scene be that police or fire or from one of the other agencies who can then look at um, the picture without having to sort of disturb us and breathe down our shoulders so we we just go there you go there's your screen there give them that and uh, and if they've got the knowledge and they want to take over or if we're doing a two-man uh two crew operation then second person can take over the camera and operate the camera as well and the lp12 is is a speaker and spotlight combined combined and the speakers are right is there and maybe one day we might use it for something i've not found use for it yet but the spotlight we use on a, an extremely regular basis and what the spotlight allows us to do is to well, obviously if we find a target with a thermal camera and it, it, it is thermal we don't really know what it is but what we're able to do in even in the pitch dark is to then put the spotlight on and switch to our daylight camera and then use the zoom on the daylight camera and actually look so it's not quite daylight quality but it's good enough for us to say actually that heat source uh, it, it, it's a false slid down in the field i can see that now or actually there's a blue coat on a person size thing i need somebody to go and have a look at that March 2022 and a 2.19 a.m. caller tells Lincolnshire Police that he is smashing up the roof. Videos show how a male smashes up multiple properties causing thousands of pounds of damage including damaging multiple cars. We deal with lots of um, people suffering mental health or, or suffering from um, drink, drugs or, or, or even protesting and the drone it comes in really useful for that and what we can see here again is it's, it's pitch dark. Um, people on the ground they're uh, having to put spotlights on to see and what you can see there is you've got uh, a male there who's obviously very upset and you see what he does is he starts smashing the roof up um, uh, not just of this property but of other properties as well and what that is that's a, a, a very long row of terrace properties so not only um, is the damage but there's the opportunity for him a to fall off without a seating uh, uh, without having that thermal camera and b to make his way miles away and, and then get down and be gone without us even knowing where he's gone so again the drone just gives us that aerial oversight of where he is and what he's doing and as you can see he's is ripping tiles off it's it's extremely dangerous um for those below so we need a containment on there to 
um, because there's, there's flying tiles, as you can see. Um, he's doing thousands of pounds worth of damage as well at the same time. And actually, um, uh, we do get this, bring this to a safe conclusion. Again, negotiator uh, brings him down. And then uh, not only are we able to track him and see, we use a spotlight. And, and spotlight does become a little bit of a negotiation tool for us. In this particular example, he didn't really like it. So it was agreed that it would be switched off in, in relation for getting something back. That's how it works. Um, with, with you know sometimes how, how the negotiators can uh, sort of work with that and then you can see a few hours later the next morning the um, footage shows the damage um, that was done to multiple cars I think there's something like five different roofs five different cars and you can just see the extent of the damage in the daylight footage he was sentenced he got nine months um, for this one uh, and uh, uh, he's sentenced to nine months for various offenses and um, it, it's devastation for a community you know it's uh, that call came in at 20 past two in the morning said there's somebody on my um roof smashing it up and you know you've got terrified residents and and there you can go on to see that we the final piece in the jigsaw puzzle for us was not just a live incident but to gather some evidence and and to get evidence of the damage of all the damage to the roofs the chimney post stacks that have been pulled off the vehicles below the the tiles that are just smashed into the cars that have got smashed windscreens and and that goes in court as well. So we've got we've got one the safeguarding of, of him to make sure he's is safely detained. Two, the evidence of him committing the offences, and three, the aftermath of the evidence of the offences that he's committed, which all go to court. It it's also a bit of a deterrent as well. So now and again, people realise that the spotlight's on them. So when people are um, uh, you know, I'm making off across the field and they know that the, the drone's following them and they've seen that and it's clearly following them and so we've got some good examples of that but once the spotlight's on them, they're kind of, well, okay, it's definitely following me, that light's on me, at what point am I going to be able to outrun him and he can't outrun us. August 2022 and the burglary suspects here were tracked by the Lincolnshire drone operator for a total of 16 minutes. So we've looked at a whole array of incidents here and this one is uh, a typical burglary and say typical, I guess there's nothing typical about it in that the drone was first on scene before any of the officers were and the drone operator decided the best thing he could do was put the containment in place. Well, we've got those three burglars, they're breaking into um, a uh, commercial building and interestingly, if you, if you look at some of the footage, you can actually see them throw an item away and you can see it actually go into the long grass, which we recovered later, which was part of the and tools that they were using to break in. Um, and then they're off and running across those flat fields of Lincolnshire again and um, and being tracked by the drone. And then they've been tracked by the drone. You'll see that they try to hide. They go down between buildings. The drone pilot moves around. They try to hide under a tree. You'll see a, he'll, he'll go around the other side of the tree and get the camera on a different angle to because he loses it momentarily and carries on to track them. Um, and then talking the officers into where he thinks they should go to try and best intercept. And um, I, I believe the footage lasts 16 minutes for this, from the minute they start to run to the minute they're detained. One of them got away. I'm not quite sure how um, I wasn't involved in this incident. Um, two of them were detained. One managed to get away. Um, but obviously, when you've got three people go off in three directions and one camera, it's very difficult to maintain a watch on all three. So two... Okay, three would have been nice, but at least two out of three, and um, they were they went to court. Um, penalties were financial penalties, uh, about two thousand pounds in fines um, in the courts uh, for for these um, these burglary offences. Great little job, um, one we couldn't have done. Um, yes, we would have uh, requested a helicopter, but the uh, time that it would have taken just happened to be drone right place, right time. Um, and you know what, you put enough uh, enough officers out there, enough drones out there, and you will be in the right place at the right time. I can go back to being a child and flying in an orchard gyro with my uncle, which was an amazing experience. The air cadets, uh, I soloed on a, a motor glider when I was 16 years old, so I, I, that, that was really with me through my childhood. I went into the Air Force when I left school, not in a flying career, but got to do a little bit of flying there as well. But really got my PPL um, when I left over 23 years ago now. So got my PPL for airplanes 23 years ago, and I've always had uh, an aircraft I've been looking up to to have either a share or or have my own aircraft. I've got my own light sport aircraft as as the call, so it's a light aircraft association permit aircraft, 
and and why most weekends um, at Mountain and it's great. I love touring and a great circle of friends. We go off together, and and I'm very very lucky to be able to do that. For us, um, the from the very beginning when we sat down in 2017 and said, "What can we do for this?" Number one, top of the list was search and rescue. That's what we wanted to use them for. That was our primary function for having the drones for us. And, and perfectly because it's Lincolnshire, it's extremely rural. People do wander off. People do get lost. Um, uh, it's it's quite it, it it really lends itself well to that environment. You know, with been lots and lots of open fields, and I'm sure you've heard Lincolnshire is extremely flat. So we've you know we've other challenges of hills as well. So it's just really really good. You put the drone up, and and some of the the biggest wins have been done within seconds of the drone taking off because the heat sources just jump out at you um but uh for us uh, it, for, for me personally i suppose it was always i wanted it to be the drones for good thing and i wanted it to be that search and rescue and if we can save a life uh then that would be you know mission accomplished for us um and and really from the very beginning that's what it was and we had that at the very start and we still continue to have that and and when we look at deployments and what we use the drones for it is still for that missing person number one the most number of deployments are for missing persons um and we we track that and we can put numbers on that and um and and, and it continues to be that and then below that are suspect searches. So, you know, we're safeguarding people. And then the second one is to make sure that any suspects are outstanding. We have the best chance possible of, of detaining them. And number two, and when you look again, the, the deployments, number two on that deployment list is suspect searches. Um, and uh, and that's good. That's what we thought it would be at the beginning. Um, and that's how it, how it sort of pans out um, month on month.